Good morning, Morai Barabotai, Bruchim Abayim. We are continuing on Masechet Makot, and we are on the bottom of the Avchet Amud Aleph, six lines up from the bottom of the Amud, Hadar Amarava. Today's Amud is being learned, Leschud Rufu Ashel Imam of Sarah Batmina, Binyamin Eliezer HaKohen Ben Malka, Rachel Simcha Bat Nahid, um, that should have Rufu'ah Shelema, Be'ezrat Hashem, Amen. Also has been dedicated for his uh, chut, for proper zivuk for Gilad ben Mordechai Ariel, and a healthy delivery for Talia bat Rivka, that of Harasah, and Hatzlacha for Avraham Rafael. Uh, this week's Amud has been sponsored by the Dayan family, by Cohen family, and Shei families. That Be'ezrat Hashem should uh, be a Schut for all of their families. Amen. 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 So we started the Shita of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov and Abba Shaul. Abba Shaul at the end of the Mishnah mentioned that only person that goes to Galut is a person that was active in something that is not a mitzvah. A Dvar Rashut. And by his activity of Dvarashut, he accidentally caused someone's death, and that's where he goes to Galut. But if you were active in a mitzvah, like a father that was trying to discipline his child, a rabbi, and that was trying to discipline his student, and of course a shaliach bedin, it would be a um, mitzvah that does not necessarily uh, render you a bar Galut, you would not go to Galut for that accidental death. So Rava is the one that really was asked and the, the, uh, the dialogue really was between Rava and um, the person that asked him, Ahume Rabbanan, that asked Rava, how do you know that Chatavat Etzim is Rishut? How do you know that the person that was chopping wood was a Dvar Rishut? Maybe it was mitzvah, maybe he was chopping wood for atzemaracha, maybe he was doing a mitzvah. And Rava answered that building a sukkah or chopping wood for atzemaracha would not necessarily be a mitzvah. Why? And Rava said a svara. Now this is going to repeat itself again in today's Amud. Rava said a svara that something that if you had it, you would not need to chop off. It's not a mitzvah be'etzim. It's not that I have to go and chop wood. I have to chop wood because I need a piece of wood. That's as simple as it is now. It could be that the wood is going to be used for a mitzvah, but that does not make the chopping of the wood a mitzvah. It's machshire mitzvah. It's you know, preparation for mitzvah. If I have it, I don't need it. A mitzvah, when we say someone is active in a mitzvah, we are referring to a person that must do this activity as a means of mitzvah. And for chopping wood, it's not a mitzvah. If I have ready wood, there's no mitzvah to go out of my way and chop another piece of wood because it is a mitzvah. So hence says Rava, that does not pass the minimum requirement of what is considered a mitzvah activity. The keva and the imatza chatuv love mitzvah. Just like when I found a piece of wood that's already chopped off, it's not a mitzvah. Hashtanami love mitzvah. Now, even though that I don't have chopped off wood and I need to cut wood, still is not going to be considered mitzvah. Now, Ravina asks Rava, it's a quick, quick review of this, that a father that was disciplining the child. That's considered mitzvah. And Ravina says to Rav, wait a second, but disciplining a child is always a mitzvah? Disciplining a child also is only a mitzvah if he needs to be disciplined. So maybe even though that he needed to be disciplined, it should not be considered a mitzvah because not mitzvah be'etzem. It's not an intrinsic mitzvah. So hence, if by mistake he killed him while disciplining him, he should go to Galut. And Rava famously said, this Chinuch 101 that we ended off with yesterday, that no, disciplining a child is always a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah be'etzem, that even the best 
perfect child also needs to be disciplined. There is um, value intrinsically in chinuch, and therefore it's considered a mitzvah. So that's how we end up. Now Rava is going to say a second answer. And again, this whole discussion is going to be repeated in today's Amud, so it's important to remember this structure. Rava said one answer here right now, that this is intrinsically mitzvah, the whole chinuch thing. And now he says a simpler answer. Rava says, you know what? I could tell you even simpler. Hadar Amar Rava. Now Rava says, Love me tahidamri. It's not necessary what I said. I could say much easier. Because the Pasuk that talks about chopping wood and then accidentally causing someone's death that you go to Galut actually has a language that from the language itself I could act I should understand that this is talking about Rashud, not mitzvah. What is the language? The ish asheritma veloy tchatra. He talks about, the, the Pasuk says over here, um, sorry, that the person that happened to come to the forest, Vasher, it doesn't say, Adam ki yavo beyar, Vasher means he happened to be. He happened to come to the forest area to chop off wood, and says Rava, whatever, whenever you have Vasher, is Dvarashut. What does he mean, Vasher? Why don't you say Kiyavo, Adam Kiyavo? It's t- coming to tell you that you happen to come. Whenever it says Vasher, that word Vasher means you happen to be there. Happen to be there indicates that I'm not going there to do a mitzvah, uh, but I just happened to, I didn't have to be there. That's not a mitzvah. If it was a mitzvah, I had to be there. Vasher yavo edirehu bayar means I happen to be there. I could have gone. I could have chosen not to go. It is not a mitzvah. So says Rava, the very wording of the pasuk tells me that this is not a mitzvah. So let's read the Gemara. Vasher yavo edirehu bayar. The ibai ayil, the ibai lo ayil. It's an indication that if he wanted, he could have gone. If he didn't want to, he didn't have to be there. If you tell me he's talking about a dvar mitzvah, if he would be mitzvah, would it be sufficient if he didn't go? No, it would not be. So therefore, it, I know that this is a dvar reshut. So amale rav ada bar ava le rava. Now, people don't let this down easily. Rav ada bar ava says, wait a second. Are you saying that any place in the Torah that says Vasher, it means it's Dvar Rashut, I have a perfect question. And there is a problem with a person that's Tameh coming to Beit HaMikdash. What happens if a Tameh Met comes to Beit HaMikdash? He gets karet. Bad, bad news, right? Says, says Rav Adabar Avar to Rava, Kol hecha dechtiv asher de ibaihu if you want to suggest that any place that it says in the Chumash Vasher is a Dvar Rashut, is not Mitzvah? El So based on what you're suggesting, the Ish Asher Yitma Velo Yitchata. A person that is Tameh and goes now to um, Beit HaMikdash, I read you the full Pasuk, the Ish Asher a person that becomes Tameh, Velo Yitchata, and he has not gone through the seven days of process of Cleansing that on the, seventh, on the third and the seventh day he goes and gets sprinkled by mechatat of a, a para duma and goes and, and, and goes to, to mikveh at the end of the seven days to be pure. He gets karet ki et mikdash Hashem time because he has made the mikdash of Hashem tame many dalozorak alav tamehu he's tame. Now, the beginning of the Pasuk, you already paid attention. It says, Ve'ish asher itma. A person that happens to become Tameh. So, it says, uh, Rav Adah Barava to Rava, wait a second. Ve'ish asher itma, according to you, suggests that somebody that happened to become Tameh, he didn't have to become Tameh, he just stumbled upon a corpse. And he should exclude a person that had a mitzvah to become Tameh. 
For instance, the classic case of a, 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 a scenario in which you have to become Tamei is you're walking on the street and you see a met mitzvah. You, you're going and you see a corpse that, you know, in the middle of a, a, a desert land, you see a corpse of a, of a Jewish man and has nobody to take care of it. That overrides almost all the other mitzvot. You drop anything you're doing, you must become Tameh. You must attend to, to the kvura of that corpse, of that met mitzvah. But it's not only that. You have other cases of met mitzvah. For instance, a kohen that says, lah yitama. Lah yitama. It has to become Tameh for the seven direct relatives, for his sister and, and all the other. And according to Rambam, other Rishonim, it's by every person, it's a mitzvah to, to tend to their, to their funeral. So those are considered a mitzvah. So are you telling me, says Rabbi Adah Barava, that if I became Tameh for a met mitzvah, I could just go into the mikdash, Tameh met? Are you saying that? Of course not. You get the same karet as everyone else if you're Tameh and you go. So you see, says Rabbi Adah Barava, that you're whole thing is wrong. When you say Vashir, Yavoed Rehu Bayar, that you want to suggest that is coming to tell you that only for a dvarashut, only optional, that he wanted to be in the Yar, but Dvar Mitzvah, like a father that was, was disciplining, a Rebbe that was disciplining, or a Shaliach Betin does not go to Galut because it says Vashir Yavo. Here also says Vashir. And we know that a person that was tamemet, even if it's a met mitzvah, he is going to get karet. He can't go to Beit Hamikdash. So says the Gemara: Ibai metame, ibai lo metame. Met mitzvah de lo sagi de lo metame. Hachi nami de patur. You want to suggest that met mitzvah would be patur from going to the mikdash? The Gemara says no. Rava answers says no. I agree with you. Everybody knows that. Any Tamimet cannot enter the Mikdash. But there, you have an additional Pasuk. You have an additional Pasuk that teaches us that regardless of how in the world you became Tameh, you still cannot go to the Bita Mikdash. What's that Pasuk? Because the Pasuk says, this is again in a different Pasuk. What's the full Pasuk? Any person that touches the corpse of a person that has died, and he does not go through the process of Tahara of the seven days, at Mishkan Hashem Time, he has made the Mishkan of Hashem Tame, Venichreta Nefesh Ahim Israel. That person gets karet if he goes to Beit HaMikdash. Ki me nida lo zorak alav. He has not gone through the process of the seven clean days and getting sprinkled by me nida, which is the effort of paraduma. Tamei yeh. Listen to these words. This, these are the key words. He will be tamei od tumatobo. Still his tuma is on him. So it says... The Gemara, when it says, Tamei Hiye is Mikol Makom. He's telling you he will be Tame. You just told me he's Tame. Why do you say again, Tamei Hiye? He will be Tame. So says, the Gemara, Rava says, the Drasha is, he's Tame, but Tamei Hiye. It's an additional wording in the Pasuk to tell you that I don't care if you had the greatest met mitzvah of the whole history, you still are Tameh for going to Beit HaMikdash. We don't care how you became Tameh when it comes to coming to Mikdash. So you have an additional pasuk. And therefore, don't you ask me a question on my general rule. I stick to my general rule. I stick to my guns. Whenever it says Vashem, is Tevar Reshut. So by going to Galut, the father that is disciplining his child, he will be patur because that's a Dvar Mitzvah. I stick to my gun, says Rava. Ah, you will ask me from Mikdash. Mikdash has two psukim about it. One additional pasuk to teach you that there, by coming to the Mikdash Tameh, even if he was Dvar Mitzvah, you still cannot come to Mikdash. Even if you had the greatest reason why you became Tamehmet, still cannot come to Mikdash. So says the Gemara, 
As a side question, just going through this drasha of Tum'ah for coming to Beit HaMikdash, Gemara asks, Mi baile, ha'hu mi baile, This additional wording of Tamei ye od Tumatobo, we need it for two drashot, two additional halachot. When it says Tamei ye, Mi baile lichtetania, Tamei ye lerabot tvul yom. When it says Tamei ye, that you can't come to Beit HaMikdash when you're Tamei, and it has an additional wording at the end of the Pasuk, Tamei ye, he will remain Tamei, is coming to add a Tvul yom. What's a Tvul yom? That a person, for instance, he had a similar mission, had a Baal Kiri, he can't come to Mikdash, and when he, the Halakha is for him to become tam, Tahor, he goes to Mikveh, and then he has Harev Shemesh. He goes to Mikveh before nighttime, and then when the night comes, he becomes Tahor. So says the Gemara, how about after he goes to Mikveh? Can he go to Mikdash? No. Even though that he went to Mikveh already, and he went through the process of Tahara, he still cannot step foot in the Harabite, in the Makoma Mikdash, until nightfall. Nightfall is the completion of his process of Tahara, and Tamei is coming to tell you, Larabot Tevulyom, he's still Tamei. He's still not finished with his Tum'ah, has a little remnants of Tum'ah, cannot step in the Beit HaMikdash. And when it says Tumato Bo, which is another additional language, says the Gemara, Larabot Mechusar Kipurim. That is coming to add the four people who need additional level of Tahara. In other words, they go to Mikveh, and they have to wait until night, and even that's not enough. They have to wait until the morning, until they bring a korban. Who are those four people? Help me out. Uh, Zav, Zava, Mesora, right? These are all the Yoledet, all the people who have to bring a korban in addition to waiting after their mikveh. So even though that they went to mikveh, and they waited the nightfall, still cannot go to mikdash until tomorrow morning when they bring their korban. They are called mechusar, Kipurim. <coughs> so says the Gemara. So this is a question on Rava, right? Because Rava wanted to say that by the case of a person that comes to Mikdash and he became Tameh for a met mitzvah, you still know that he can't step foot in the Mikdash because I have additional psukim here. So the Gemara just knocked that out. It says, no, those additional words I need for other halachot. Right? The Gemara says, no, 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 no. You don't get it. I am saying from one word that you didn't touch. Od, still. Why do you have to say still too much? Just say tumato bo. Why do you have to say still he has his tumah? To come to tell that even if he was tameh for met mitzvah, still, still he is tameh. From that word still, from that word od, ana me'od kamina, says Rava. So Rava basically saved his jasha. We're good. We're good with the jasha of Rava. Um, how he set up the whole thing that Asher is Dvar Reshut, and therefore Rava knows that when the Pasuk talks about killing someone accidentally, that's only by Dvar Reshut. And it excludes, it excludes a person um, disciplining their child, their student, or Shaliach Petin that is punishing someone. Ika de Matnila Aha. There are those who learn this whole thing on a different, this whole back and forth of Rava. And what is considered mitzvah, what is considered hechsher mitzvah, on a completely different sugya. Now, this is a tangent, of course, because this is the same memra, the same halacha of Rava, but it is said on a different back and forth when it comes to the, the halachot of Shabbat versus the halachot of Shvi'it. So says the, the Gemara, Ikar demat nila, aha, becharishu bakasir tishpot. The pasuk talks about, um, Stopping from plowing and harvesting. The full pasuk is Sheshet Yamim Tavot Ubayom Tishpot, which clearly is speaking about Shabbat, right? That, that's no question. The beginning of the pasuk speaks about Shabbat. But then, the pasuk is a very short pasuk actually. The entire pasuk is Sheshet Yamim Tavot Ubayom Tishpot, Becharish Ubakasir Tishpot. Works six days, 
on the seventh day, Shabbat, you stop. And Becharish Uba Kasir Tishpot. You can't do plowing and you cannot do harvesting. Now, what this last word of the Pasuk referring to is Machloket Tanaim between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Ishmael. Is he talking about Shabbat? Just like the beginning of the or is maybe talking about not Shabbat but Shviit. It's talking about Shemitah. So say, yes. So says the Gemara. Rabbi Akiva Omer, "Eno salich lomar Charish shel Shviit vekatzir shel Shviit." It's not needed to say um, that the on Shviit on, on, on the seventh year Shnata Shemitah you cannot do plowing and harvesting that we know already. Because the Pasuk says, It says it already. It's talking about sometimes you have beneficial processes for the seventh year that it does not happen in the seventh year itself. For instance, Right before Shvit starts, you plow the land, and this way, it, you know, it grows, the, the stuff grow much better. Asur, asur, even though that's not in Shvit, says Rabbi Akiva. Or, right after Shvit, you want to harvest all the things that could have been harvested on Shvit, says Rabbi Akiva, all of that also is added to the Isur, to the prohibition. So it's not only the seventh year that you can't work, there are certain things that you can't work on the sixth and the eighth year either. Rabbi Ishmael says, no, what are you talking about? This Pasuk is talking about Shabbat. It's not talking about Shvi'id. Rabbi Ishmael Omer, Macharish Reshut, Afkatsi Reshut, is coming to teach you a halacha by Hechot Shabbat. Comparing the harvest to plowing. To teach that just like plowing is always reshut, it's never a mitzvah to plow. You know any mitzvah for plowing? No. Any time that you plow, you're doing it because you want to. But katsir, harvesting sometimes could be mitzvah. Give me an example of harvesting that's mitzvah. We all know harvesting korban haomer. Right? It's called Ktsirat Omer. That's a mitzvah. So says Rabbi Ishmael, you ready for this? It blows your head off. Says Rabbi Ishmael, you could harvest for Korban Omer on Shabbat. How do I know? Because it says over here, the Kharishu Katsir Tishpot. I don't need it to tell me that Khatsir and Kharish is Asur on Shabbat. I know the 39 Melachot already from Melechet Mishkan. I don't need you to tell me in the Pasuk. Why is the Pasuk telling me? about Shabbat, Becharish Bakatsir Tishbot, is coming to tell you, just like plowing is always Reshut, and that's what's Asur, the Katsir, the, the, the harvesting is also only Asur when it's Reshut, to exclude the harvest of Korban HaOmer, which is Mitzvah. Yatsa Katsir HaOmer, Shehu Mitzvah. And now this is the repeat that I mentioned to you before. The whole structure of Rava with this Talmud in the Bet Midrash is going to be now repeated on this sugya of Shabbat versus Shvid. Somebody in the Bet Midrash asked Rava, "Mimai the Charisha, the Reshut, the Rav Charisha, Ha Omer the Mitzvah." Who says to you that the plowing is not the plowing of Mitzvah? Maybe. I am the one that has the zchut of bringing Korban Omer from my field, and I am preparing for Korban Omer. I am plowing my land to plant the seorim, to plant the barley that's going to be used for Korban Omer. That's a mitzvah, says Rava. No, 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 no. But Rava says no. He says, it's not an intrinsic mitzvah. You remember this whole discussion we had? Intrinsic mitzvah versus a like mitzvah cumin. Here is not an intrinsic mitzvah because if I had a land that was already plowed, I have to plow it again? No. It's a hechitimtzi to have a proper, proper land. When you plow it, the oxygen goes in. And blah, blah, blah. The whole chokhmah that they, But if it's already plowed, I don't have to plow it. But Ketzirat Omer, that is a mitzvah. You need to harvest for Leshem Korban Omer. 
Ktsira Omer. If I found it already cut off <coughs> by some kid, that's not good enough. I have to go cut myself for Korbana Omer. So therefore, says Rabba, that's not considered intrinsic mitzvah. Love mitzvah, it's not considered mitzvah. It be Ravina Rava, again, this is an entire repeat. Ravina asked Rava, Yatsahav Maket Benova, Rava Harode Talmido, this whole thing of the father disciplining the kid, is that an a intrinsic mitzvah? You want to suggest that that's an intrinsic mitzvah? If the kid is behaving, that should be okay. You don't have to discipline them, and of course, Rava, Rava answers what we saw, the, the profound Chinuch lesson, right? And he says, no, that's also considered mitzvah because, first white line, dichtiv yaser bincha v'yanichecha, right? Ve'yiter ma'adanim l'nafshecha, that is intrinsically considered mitzvah to discipline your child. Hadar Amar Rava, and Rava says afterwards, lav milta hita amri. Same exact thing. I didn't even need to say this. This is a good answer. That this is intrinsic mitzvah, not intrinsic, but I don't even need to say that because it is in the pasuk that you see that we're talking about a ktsira and harisha that is dvar reshut. How do I see it? Says Rava, ktsira dum yad harisha, ma harisha matza harush eno choresh. Just like by harisha, if you already found a field that is harush is already plowed, you don't need to plow it again. So therefore you see that that's not a mitzvah of ktira nami. The ktira also is a, in a situation that would be only reshud not mitzvah, coming to exclude a ktira ta'omer, that would be mitzvah. Ve'is al kadatach, mitzvah and if you tell me that this is talking about mitzvah, matzah katsur eno kotzer, if you find um, the bundles of, of barley that are already cut away, you don't need to cut for korban omer? Of course you do. The pasuk says, mitzvah liktsor ulehavi. The, the halakha is you have to cut for korban haomer. If you find it just to be cut off, on this, you find a, bu a bunch of barley that's already cut off. Can you just pick them up from the ground and bring them for Korban Omer? Absolutely not. You need intrinsic mitzvah. You need to go and cut it. And therefore, you see that that is considered a ktsira of mitzvah. Hence, Rava sticks to his uh, shita that is coming to exclude a ktsira shel mitzvah. Um, and it's same over here that in the case of, of Galut, that says only when a person is active in a dvar reshut, in something that is optional, to exclude the case that a person was active in a mitzvah of disciplining a child or a student, or a shaliach bedin that was active in, in delivering and carrying out the psaktin, the verdict of this person be needing the punishment, and therefore, if they accidentally cause someone's death, through the mitzvah that they're doing, they would be, it's like, um, you know, a doctor, basically we have like liability limitations for, for these things. If you're trying to do a mitzvah, this is, it becomes a question for a kohen that is a surgeon and under surgery killed somebody, right? Can he still do nesiyat kapayim? A kohen that kills someone cannot. Yedechem damim alehu, you cannot do nesiyat kapayim as a kohen if you cause someone's death, right? But that, that becomes a question if it's negligence, not negligence, if you're doing a mitzvah to save his life and he dies under your knife and so on, that becomes a question over here as well. If you're doing mitzvah, there's a gezerat katuf says Rava, that when you are doing a mitzvah, you will be let off the hook and you will not go to Galut, but Hashem will start the next Mishnah in the, in the following shiur.